Today is Saturday, January 6th. Do your digital spaces make you feel overwhelmed? Things like your email inbox, downloads folder, and the photos on your smartphone can pile up and quickly become a cluttered mess. Today, I'm welcoming digital organizer Lisa McCarg back to the Newsworthy. For years, Lisa has been helping online business owners take control of their digital chaos. And today, she's sharing her top organizational tips to help all of us declutter our digital lives and start 2024 with a system that works. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Lisa, thank you for joining us here on the Newsworthy once again. Thank you so much, Erica, for inviting me back. I'm really excited to talk more about how to get your digital life organized. Before we dive into the specific strategies, what do you like to tell people to help them first just have that motivation, that momentum to do the thing? Just start and start small. Don't feel like you have to overhaul everything on day one. I always like to say, you know, if you were going to declutter your house or like organize your whole house or downsize it, you wouldn't start with the family heirlooms. You would start maybe in your bathroom with one drawer in your bathroom. You can approach digital organization the same way. What would you say is your top advice overall for getting your digital life organized in the new year? You need to have a plan of attack. Let's just say it's your email inbox. And let's say you're like, I'm going to get it organized. I'm going to declutter it. It's going to be amazing. But you haven't sat down to think about, okay, well, what does it's going to be amazing actually mean to you? What do you really want it to look like? And then once you have your end goal, how are you actually going to make that happen? It's a little bit like somebody saying, I want to lose 50 pounds, but then they don't have a plan of how to do that. You know, they haven't signed up for some workout class or looked at what they're eating. There's like, I'm going to lose 50 pounds and it's just going to magically happen. The best thing you can do to set yourself up for success is to have a plan and to have a realistic plan. So back to that example, if I said, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds this year. I don't expect to lose 50 pounds in January. You know, I'm going to spread that out to a reasonable goal that is sustainable as well. Because if you go in, you know, gung-ho and doing all the things right away, you're going to get overwhelmed and burned out. It's, it's the same with our digital organizing. All right. So you were talking about the email inbox. How do you recommend people really just get started organizing that? So in your inbox, maybe you're going to look at what folders do I need to create? What kind of emails am I getting? And what sort of system do I need in place to manage what I'm getting? And now what am I getting that I don't want to get? OK, I'm going to unsubscribe from those. But, you know, what's my plan of attack for that? Um, Am I going to do it weekly? Am I going to set a timer? How am I going to do that? And I love you kind of laying out what a plan could look like. Could you go a step further and give us details of what what are some good common folders to set up um, to really give people this feeling of let me start here with my plan? Common folders that I see a need for often is one for shopping and marketing emails. Create a dedicated label called promo codes or shopping or something like that and just put all those emails into that shopping label so then they're out of your inbox um, but you know where to find them if you do want that coupon code another one um, i like to create is a learning folder or maybe courses where i put all of the login info um, when you get kind of those verification emails you might make one for whatever you know topic or hobbies you're really into Maybe you're really into minimalism. You know, this is going to be your year of minimalism. And so you've signed up for all these newsletters. Well, don't just let those sit in your inbox. Put them in a dedicated folder. And the benefit of having a label or a folder like that is twofold. One, it gets it out of your inbox. So your inbox is now less cluttered. And those emails aren't hiding other important emails from like maybe your children's school or a doctor's office or something like that. And the second benefit then is a lot of times people are saying, I just don't have time to read those newsletters or emails when they come in. Now on maybe a Saturday morning, you've got your coffee. You want to sit down and actually read them. They're all there together in one spot. You can find them and you can sit down and, you know, scroll through them and read them. 
The final label that I really like to suggest is one called Save Just In Case. I use this all the time as a teacher where you would get an email that would have really important information and you think, hmm, I might need that someday. Um, so I probably shouldn't delete it, but it also doesn't need to just sit in my inbox. Let me put this in the save just in case or this save for reference folder. So then two, three months down the road, I'm like, oh gosh, I really need the steps on how to do X, Y, Z. Oh, I bet it's in that save for reference or save just in case folder. Let me go look. Oh yeah, there it is. I've heard you have a five minute method if you're ready to just start over with your email. What's that? If you wanna just burn it all down and start over, no matches or gasoline required, you can just move all the emails in your inbox out of your inbox and into a folder called old inbox or my former hot mess of an inbox, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, have fun with it. And then depending how many emails you have in your inbox, I recommend you maybe go page by page so that you don't kind of like freeze up Gmail or Outlook or whatever your email service provider is, but you select all the emails on that page and then just drag and drop them into that old um, inbox folder. And now you still have all of those emails, so you don't have to worry about what if there's something important I, I, I can't delete. You haven't deleted them, but you have moved them out of the way and now your inbox is empty. And now you have a brand new inbox you can start from scratch in. So as new emails come in, you're gonna see them all, you get a fresh start. And again, if you have that plan of how you're gonna manage these, you can implement that plan to all the new emails coming into your empty inbox. And then, you know, you can chip away at that old inbox folder, maybe five minutes a day, and you can kind of work your way through that. You've written on your blog that inbox zero meaning no new emails in your account ever, is actually not realistic or useful. Can you expand on that? Inbox zero, in my opinion, it just puts more stress on the average person than it needs to. The reason being is emails don't stop, they keep coming. So I might empty out and get to inbox zero and like three minutes later, there's 10 new emails. And for a person like me, that's really, really overwhelming. Um, I, I find that a lot of pressure to always keep the inbox empty. The other thing is I use my inbox like a to-do list. I really think you need some emails in your inbox because it can serve as a reminder of what you need to do um, in the near future. That's kind of how I use it. And really the main reason is I think your energy is better spent elsewhere, working on their business or having healthy boundaries or spending time with their families or things like that. I think there's kind of this idea that inbox zero is like the gold standard. Um, and I, I just don't think it is. And speaking of things that don't serve us, what's the best way to figure out what to delete and what to keep? Plus how to handle all of those holiday pictures our guest admits it wasn't that long ago that her own photos were in complete disarray, how she organized them now and for the future. But first, a quick break for our sponsors. With our recent move and some other changes, I started to notice that a little added stress seemed to be taking a toll on my skin. So one of the things I'm thinking about this new year is a little extra self-care. And for me right now, that means taking better care of my skin's appearance and its health too. I'm so excited that I've partnered with One Skin because I'm loving their science-backed approach to healthier skin and their products feel so good on my face. I'm using their face and eye cream so far and loving it already. It's moisturizing, but still lightweight. My face feels instantly hydrated and plump. Plus, I know it's doing its job with a scientifically proven peptide called OS1 that targets fine lines and wrinkles right where they start, my cells. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code NEWSWORTHY at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code NEWSWORTHY. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them, so please support our show and tell them we sent you. New year, healthier skin. That's One Skin. This episode is also brought to you by AG1. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should be at least simple. That's why for almost a year now, I've been drinking AG1 every day. It's just one scoop mixed in water, once a day, every day, and it makes me feel nourished. 
That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. I like to drink AG1 first thing in the morning, which is recommended for optimal nutrient absorption. And if I'm running short on time and can't mix my AG1 before I head out, I'll grab a travel pack. Each is an individual serving of AG1 that's easy to mix on the go, helping ensure I get my daily nutrients no matter what. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I've partnered with them for a while now. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. Okay, now back to our conversation. Okay, what about holiday photos? How and when do you go through and sort yours? What I do, um, I store mine in Dropbox. I have a reminder set on my Google Calendar. At the end of every month, I go onto my phone and I select all the photos from that month. And then I upload them to Dropbox. Um, Let's just say that it is February 2024. At the end of February, I'm going to have a folder in my Dropbox. It goes family photos. Then there's a folder for each year. So I'll click on the year 2024. Then there's a folder for each month. So there is a folder called February 2024. And I'm going to upload all of my photos from that month directly from my phone into Dropbox. This takes three minutes. Then once they're uploaded, I actually delete them from my phone. Um, I might keep a few that really make me smile, but otherwise I delete them from my phone then. And now if I want to make a family yearbook, if I want to make a calendar or something, my photos are really nicely organized by year and month. And I also make subfolders. Um, My kiddo's birthday is in September. So every September photo folder has a subfolder um, that says kiddo's birthday. And that's where all of her birthday photos are. Or my husband and I really like to travel. We were in Ireland was our last big trip. So in August, or actually in July of 2023, there's a subfolder that says Ireland 2023. And that's where all of those are. It makes it really, really searchable. It makes them easy to find, and it's a sustainable practice that I can handle. So um, my family, we celebrate Christmas. I will pull all of the, you know, Christmas 2023 photos into a Christmas 2023 folder, and, you know, it'll take me a few minutes. Do you like to approach the backlog of photos similar to what we talked about with email, where you do that slowly while you're implementing your new plan for all future photos? Yep. Uh I am shaking my head because, oh, digital photos. Um, I did not always have a plan. My kiddo at the time of this recording, um, she is nine. And postpartum, I was like in the weeds. I have so many photos from like the first probably six years of my kid's life. And they were kind of everywhere. You know, some were on Shutterfly. They were on Google Photos. They were just here, there, and everywhere. And I knew something needed to change. And so, like I said, the first thing I did is I made a plan because if I didn't have a plan of attack, I was going to sit down at my computer and just immediately be overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I have 8 million photos. So I made the plan for photos moving forward. And then I started working through the backlog. So I went and said, okay, I'm going to go. I know I have stuff on Google Photos. I'm going to go to Google Photos. I'm going to search for photos from January of 2021. I'm going to download them all, move them to Dropbox, and then remove them from Google Photos. Next, um, I'm going to go to Shutterfly. I'm going to find all the photos there from January of 2021. I'm going to download them. I'm going to upload them into my new system, and then I'm going to delete them from Shutterfly. And I chipped away at it. I was, I did not sit down one Saturday and say, I'm going to do all of this today. Um, Decision fatigue is real. You only have so much your brain can handle physiologically. It's a marathon. And I think that's really how you have to approach this. And when you have a plan and you kind of have a list um, and you can check stuff off, you can see that you're making progress. Whether it is photos in your downloads folder, your emails, any of the above, how do you like to decide what to delete and what to save? 
This is a question I've actually adapted from two guys known as the minimalists. Does this add value to my life? Or you can adapt it. Does this add value to my business, to my teaching, to my family, whatever? So if you're looking at a file, first ask yourself, does this add value to my life? Maybe it's been sitting in your Google Drive or on your computer desktop for three years and you have not used it. And I will then ask people, is that really adding value? It's not. Now, are there notable exceptions with like financial documents? And there are situations where I haven't opened that in three years and I'm not getting rid of it. Um, And that's okay. But you can kind of ask yourself those questions. And um, the final thing, again, this is also adapted from the minimalists. It's called the just in case rule because a lot of people will run across files and emails and think, well, I might need that someday. I better keep it just in case. And the just in case rule in its original form is, can I easily replace this thing in less than 20 minutes for less than $20? And you can kind of adapt that. Now, easily is a subjective term. You decide what that means. And the numbers, 20 minutes and $20, you substitute that for your own time and money values and your own situation. But if the answer is, yeah, I could probably easily replace this. If the answer is yes, you can go ahead and probably let go of that thing because you know you can easily replace it. If the answer is no, it would take me a lot of time and energy to replace this, go ahead and keep that. But maybe instead of letting it live in your main file area, maybe you create a separate folder called just in case items or archived items or stuff I'm too afraid to delete. So you still have it, you know where to find it if you need it, and it's out of the way of your everyday files or emails or photos, whatever it is. Any final thoughts? about how we can set ourselves up for success in 2024. Make a plan and take small, consistent actions. And don't think, you know, let's say this is a New Year's resolution. Don't think you're gonna get it all done in January. You have a whole 12 months, 365 days to work with. Spread it out and set yourself up for success. For more digital decluttering advice from Lisa McCarg, visit her website at lisamch.com. There you can download her free guide called Three Steps to an Inbox That Doesn't Look Like Crap. And check out her Instagram account too for quick tips. We have links in our episode notes to it all. Thank you so much for joining us for this latest special edition episode. If you're new here to the Newsworthy, welcome. Be sure to give our regular weekday episodes a listen as well. Our daily roundups get you updated on the news you need to know in just 10 minutes a day, every Monday through Friday morning. So we'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend.